The name of this workshop is Prisoners and FIPs versus the USA, Anti-Capitalism Behind Bars. My name is Selma James. I am a supporter of um, prisoners in particular. I edited a book called Jailhouse Lawyers, Prisoners, um, what is the name? Prisoners Defending Prisoners versus the USA. I should know the title. <laughs> uh, and that by Mumia Abu Jamal, and that book has been published on both sides of the Atlantic, both in the US and the UK, and is being read in a number of places. We're hoping for various translations. The importance of that book is that it describes a movement inside of prisons which has not been visible or widely known. And I think that the present period of occupation and the rise of movements everywhere in the world convinces us, if nothing else has, that the movement has always been there, whether we were aware of it or not, and that the movement is now determined to make its public power felt. Um, I think that accounts for the fact of this workshop and perhaps other workshops at this um, left forum because increasingly people outside are de astonished to find out what has been happening inside and how much the number of people inside have to do with what the movement is doing outside, intimidating, undermining that movement, and incarcerating many of the leadership and foot soldiers of that movement inside. We'll hear more about it as this remarkable panel uh, will explain. The first thing is working together. Mm -hmm. I, the Georgia strikers, I mentioned this last mm -hmm. night, the Georgia strikers who refused to leave their cells to work for free, the whole, all the prisons in Georgia did that. Most of those strikers were, of course, black men. Mm -hmm. But you could not find the word racism mm -hmm. in the material they put out because they understand together. race right. and they understood that if they wanted the white prisoners to come out with them and the prisoners who are people of color but not black, they had to eliminate the word race from that thing. Mm -hmm. That is just what this brother is speaking about. They understood race and they understood the power that black people have accumulated over the years by great struggle and they knew how to get it together mm. so when they came out on strike they could say all of us are that's coming right, out that's right that's you right. see that didn't mean they were going to forget about racism you know mm -mm. they had a platform to deal with racism now they had the power of a universal strike to deal with it and I think that's this uh, identity politics that some of these careerists have played around with so that they get the job. They're not interested in ending racism. They're interested in their own careers and we have to be much more flexible about the way we handle sex, race, uh, indigenous, um, disability, whether we're criminal or not, we have to be more sophisticated in order to make the connection, draw out the connections among us and have the power of that unity. I do appreciate what Edward has been saying. I want to make one other point and that is it's very, very true what the brother has said about lawyers and I want to say that this identity politics has meshed with the careerism of individuals, the ambition, the individual ambition, so that there is a whole structure that guarantees mm. illegality mm. in the courts, in the society, among NGOs, 
even in support networks. Yes. That's why I trust Teresa. Mm -hmm. Her stake in it is her father. Mm -hmm. She's not going to crap out for a good job, you That's know. Right. That's but right. a lot of people are and are making money mm -hmm. off support just like they make any industry. The prison industrial complex is an industry that has been built on the need of the state for repression. Mm. Tell them about your we cream have to the make crop. pardon your cream of the crop. You you just say that in a minute. <laughs> but I do want to say, you see, we have to get it right about the mm. prison industrial complex. Right. Yeah. It is an industry, mm. but it didn't start as an industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a form of American concentration camp yeah. and that's what the industry was built on but it's the concentration camp which was the first priority and they used all the careerists and scabs and right-wing pigs against us. Mm. So those who talk like us almost and those who talk against us came together against us by crapping out at particular moments on behalf of their individual careers, and we have to stop that. That's right. That's okay. it. Hey, I, that's right. Yeah, I want to mention, uh, because you mentioned Mumia, I had to mention Leonard Peltier. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read a sentence from something he wrote last year, and that we have to take on board. He said, I am honored that the most powerful government has considered me a challenge that they would violate all their own laws to keep me in prison. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not forgetting Leonard, and he's not so near us, but we have to incorporate him in what we do. Native Americans, we uh, each of us from the United States in particular have a responsibility to Native Americans mm. because we're here because they're not, mm -hmm. and we have to always bear that in mind. You see, the, the movement has to become broader in its perspective, That's right. because the one percent, we have to break that down. Mm -hmm. We have to say who that one percent is and who the supporters of oh, that one percent are. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to demand a great deal more of all of those who claim to be the movement mm -hmm. but who aren't. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. The NGOs, the nonprofits, NGOs. the ones who do surveys, for mm -hmm. what purpose, we yes. don't know. We don't need right. that survey, we need a picket line. Right. You know, <laughs> that we have to decide when we want facts, what facts we want, and we have to be guided by the people who are on the cutting edge. So if the prisoners need this information, that's the information we should get. Mm -hmm. If the movement needs that information, we should go for that information. But information mm -hmm. for information for information, it does nobody any that's good that's except mm -hmm. to take resources from the movement and put them in the hands of the individual who can buy a bigger house for himself. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, say one other thing. You see, the brothers spoke, a number of people here spoke uh, who were in prison. The, at the UN social, U.S. Social Forum in 2010, which I attended, I wandered into, I didn't know what I was doing, into a workshop of FIPs, formerly incarcerated persons people who are smart beyond smart because they have been inside mm -hmm. and there is nothing you can tell them about the state, about the hierarchy in society, about what is really happening in the world in stark form, mm -hmm. okay? They know it from the, they know the truth and there's no way that that truth can be hidden from them and we have to make use of those people. Those people are precious. A lot of people don't get out, Troy Davis. <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, are defeated inside or die inside. But some of us get out. And these are precious people in our society. Mm -hmm. We must ask them to educate us. That's right. To tell us what the society is really like. Mm -hmm. Because what we get outside is a watered down form of what they get inside. So mm -hmm. we will know more about what is happening to us and we will strengthen 
our movement. Okay, so that's why it, the title is Prisoners and FIPs. And they are doing some fantastic organizing in all kinds of communities, including organizing, I understand, in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. on this question that, um, uh, that Sam spoke about, mm -hmm. about uh, felons not getting jobs. So that's the kind of work that is going on. That is the breadth and strength and depth, depth of our movement. Mm -hmm. And we have to take power from that, strength from that, and unity from that. That's right, yeah. We should have a 